is the Mark 7 Volkswagen Golf the best Golf there will ever be? And I think there is a good argument for it, and I'm going to try and uh, see whether that is the case in this video. So the Mark 7 Golf, it came out 10 years ago now, in, in 2013, so it's it's been around a long time and it has been superseded by the Mark 8. I've always admired the Golf Mark 7 from afar, but until now I've never driven one, and I've always seen it as the spiritual successor to the Mark 4, which I've done a review on already. The Mark 7 is, is a car that a lot of people have been saying that it's like the last proper Golf, the last Golf that, that fits all the criteria of what a Golf should be, which is a very refined and, and quality and luxury car for a reasonable price and when I get in this car and, and, and drive it what are my initial impressions the first thing is that it's just really refined in here now that's a word that car journalists throw around and and it, and it does encompass a lot of different things essentially it's quiet it's smooth it glides over bumps in, in the road when you're going at speed there's not much wind or road noise lack of noise vibration and harshness that's the official term that they use you really can tell that Volkswagen have made that their priority with this car it's not the, the softest spongiest smoothest ride ever but it it's got a very relaxing demeanor to it you know you can't really hear the engine even if I drive it like a, an old person in the revs are too high So inside the cabin of the Mark 7, it's, as always, a very sensible affair from Volkswagen. No sort of Italian flair or French uh, quirkiness. It's all just very business-like, sensible, well-laid-out dashboard. By no means does it look bad. One disappointing thing, with this being an older design, is that the this infotainment screen is down quite low, and I much prefer having that up here, so that you don't have to take your eye too far off the road. I quite like, in this particular model, the brushed metal effect that we've got going on here. The dashboard is slightly angled towards the driver as well, which is a vaguely sporty touch, along with this flat-bottomed steering wheel, which is obviously pointless. These cloth seats are fairly comfortable, a good side lateral support. One thing I would say is that there's no lumbar adjustment, and I think that probably some of the Golf, with the higher spec ones, you could get them. I can feel my back sort of arching slightly the wrong way into this seat. So this car is mid-spec, it's a match. It means that it's got things like auto lights and it's, got, it's actually got heated seats, which is nice. You've got an auto dim rear view mirror, dual zone climate control. This one's got radar cruise control as well. Every single Golf Mark 7 right from the beginning will come with air conditioning and four times electric windows. Most other things are on the higher trim levels, but of course, most Golfs were sold at a higher trim level, so unless you're finding a Golf S, which is the base, you'll have other things. Now, of course, with this being a modern car, it's got a electronic handbrake. It's quite a quiet one, actually, and obviously it, it comes off when you drive off. It's also got auto hold, which is a Volkswagen thing. It's nice when you need to do a hill start because you don't have to worry about that. It'll just hold you on the brakes until you set off but also it'll hold you when you're facing downhill as well. Infotainment system in the middle here, it's got a, a decent processor in it, I can tell, because it responds dead quick to everything and you can zoom in and out on the sat-nav and it doesn't lag. You've got some little buttons either side of the screen, which you've got on all of the Golfs except for the biggest screen. You can set all manner of things in the options for the cars. It's quite customizable. Now, I've said this many times in many videos, this one, at least, has Android Auto. Now, I presume that's something that they introduced in the later Mark 7.5 and on. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay are really important, I think, in a modern car because the software is obviously always much better when it's built by Google or Apple. In front of me I've got controls on the steering wheel for the infotainment and radio and so on. And I've also got all the cruise control on the steering wheel. Now, Volkswagen did have it on a stalk and I much prefer having it on here. The styling of this car, I, I really actually really like it. I think it's um, a perfect design for the Volkswagen Golf. It's how a modern Golf should look. Like it, it's got all the right sort of features. It's got the very square, uh, sharp lines and the, the right kink at the back in the C pillar. Quite an understated design, but it's quite a good looking car in my opinion. It's a very practical shape. The golfiest looking Golf there might ever be. So the facelift, that was in 2016 and it's unofficially known as the Mark 7.5 
they made a few minor changes to the front bumper and LED lights and things like that. Interior-wise, they did. They had this bigger screen and, and some various other optional extras. But they didn't change the basic way that the car drives. I'm pleased to report that there is a three-door version. Now, it was mostly the Golf GTI and Golf R that had the three-door body shell. I always like to see a three-door, and they're something that kind of disappeared now. But you also uh, have an estate version of the Golf as well. So the engine in this car, it's the one litre petrol TSI model, which is the turbo three cylinder. Now, confusingly, it's got more power than the 1.2 turbo, which was available earlier than this one. Uh, it's got 115 horsepower and 0 to 60 in 9.3 seconds. So it's perfectly adequate uh, performance from that tiny one litre engine. All petrol and diesel Golfs were three or four cylinder. There were no six cylinder VR5s, VR6s, nothing crazy like that. The petrols ranged from one litre up to two litre. The, the GTI and the Golf R are at 220 and 300 horsepower a piece. Nice bits of kit and a car that I'll, I would love to review another time. Then you've got the diesels, which were largely two litre various power up to 180. The petrols are going to get you 45 miles per gallon, something like that, and the diesels 55 miles per gallon, so it depends what you what you want. The petrols are known to be more reliable than the, than the diesels. Reliability, the Golf isn't what it once was, not like the Mark IV, which was sort of legendarily reliable. A lot of it's down to the fact that modern cars have got so many different things that have been added, added on for emissions reasons and stuff that you can't really blame the manufacturers too much, but they're just not reliable like they were. So up front um, we've got a couple of cup holders in the middle. Now it actually does not fit the fat bottom bowl which is unusual for... Oh no! I take that back. It does fit. I was resting it on top of the, the little legs that uh, pop out. And then in the side pockets there's loads of room for the bottle and it's lined with like sort of carpety material which is really soft. I imagine that if you spilt something in there, it would be a pain to get out of that carpet. You've got a little storage unit under the climate controls, which goes quite far back. And it's got a, a nice, damped, smooth cover as well. And there's a USB port in there. Then you've got the sense console cubby, which is actually quite small, but that's also got quite a nice, smooth action on it as well. Glove box, it's air conditioned. And there's a sunglasses holder up here and a little cubby to the right hand side of the steering wheel as well. So it's got to that time in the video where we're going to ask backseat JJ what he thinks of the back of the, the Mark 7 Golf. What What are you, oh my god, what are you wearing now? Oh, oh these things, yeah, uh, these are my rose tinted glasses which I actually got for you mate because you keep banging on about how good the Mark 4 is. I thought you probably need a pair of these but there you go. Fair enough. Oh yeah. Oh, it's like it's 1997 again. Can you tell us about the back of the Golf now, please? So head and leg room, I've got plenty of head room. The leg room is just enough for me to sit behind JJ. It's slightly better than the Mark IV actually, but don't tell him that. Little pockets back here as well with the with the little carpety stuff, which is nice, oh, it's nice that. And there are two vents on the back of the centre console. The seats fold 60-40 and there is a armrest here and a ski hatch so uh, you can get in the boot and put your put your skis through there two little lights up here and uh, back to you cheers mate so let's say you do want to take this car out on a twisty road and and, and have a bit of fun with it how how does it handle it, it's all right it's, it's much better than the golf mark IV that i reviewed as I said in that review, that was Boaty McBoatface. This is very much not Boaty McBoatface. The steering feels fairly accurate. Definitely set up for like a, to be a comfortable car, and it's not really focused on, on handling, but it's good enough that you, could, you can have fun with it. Now, used Golfs can be quite expensive to buy. Um, they've got quite good residuals, you know, so they, at least it means that they'll hold value when you come to sell yours. But it, they are also pretty affordable to run because the tax on pretty much every Golf in the UK, apart from the performance ones, is 20 or 30 pounds a year to tax. Now that only goes up to 2017, so any car newer than that, it'll just be that flat rate. They're not bad to insure. Uh, this one's pretty low group, I think like group 17 or something. Something that a lot of people say about the Golf, and I do agree, is that it's classless. You could quite easily see it in the hands of, of, of almost any type of driver. It could be a rich person's car, someone who just wants to fly under the radar, but still wants a nice car to actually drive around in but it could also be you know, a family car, a boy racer car, grandma's car. If you've been watching a few of my videos and, and you know, I keep popping up on the home feed, please do think about subscribing because it might not mean anything to you because YouTube tends to serve you up the videos anyway, even if you don't subscribe. 
but to me it makes a big difference. In conclusion then, is this the best golf that there will ever be? Now obviously I can't tell you what will come in the future, but I suspect that the golf might even disappear. I mean Ford have just got rid of the Fiesta. Um, who's to say that there even will be a golf in 10 years time? And uh, a sad day that that will be. It's it's everything that you want from a golf. It's, it's comfortable, it's refined, it's understatedly good looking. The Mark 8 it doesn't really do that because they've they've gone through a sort of cost cutting measures and they've they've got all these cheaper materials and I would say overall I'd put it at a level with the Mark 4 simply because the Mark 4 it just had this legendary uh, build quality and reliability and you still see them everywhere out on the roads and will that be the case with this car when it's uh, 20 25 years old and uh, I'm not so sure so remains to be seen but at the moment I think I'll give them equal standing. Oh and if you want to know what's so good about the Mark IV then do watch that video up there um, and yeah cheers I'll see you in the next one.